Let's have there prayer we before we start. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're grateful now again for your love and your blessings. We pray now as we study your word tonight, Lord, give us understanding, strength. Lord, we want to thank you for Jesus. Lord, you made it all possible. And we just pray now, again, that his name might be lifted up from this point throughout eternity. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And we'll fill in what my son didn't. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just Hello. kidding. <laughs> Come on in. It'd be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 7. chapter 7. Right. We'll start reading in verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came <clears throat> up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised it up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, and I Christ, <clears throat> before whom there were three of the first horns plucked out by the roots, and... Behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. We stop at verse 8. Now, I'm just going to give you uh, an outline, and then we'll go back, and well, maybe in places we'll stop and talk a little bit, but um, then we'll go back and go through it all again. Another passage we're going to be looking at, if you want to start looking at it, hopefully I'll get there, will be Zechariah chapter 5. I hope to get there tonight. We'll pray that we will. All right? Four end time power blocks described in Scripture. We're talking about the last days of humanity. The last days of, of this whole world. And, well, actually, it's the last days uh, up to the tribulation. Actually, there will be another thousand years following that, which will be the millennium, which that's another great study in itself. And we'll, we won't be there yet. It'll be a long time before we get there. All right. <clears throat> Again, I'll give you something new here. Uh, what we're doing, I've already 
gone through Revelation chapter 1 and chapters 2 and 3. I have yet to do chapters 4 and 5, but that's coming. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, prophecy. We're looking at um, the, well, the kingdoms of Daniel chapter 2 and 7. Um, let's start. We're going to entitle this, The King of the Last. The King of the West. Now, that's not words that you will find in your scripture, but we will explain it. The King of the West. <clears throat> the Western Confederacy of Antichrist, if you want to write that down. The Western Confederacy of Antichrist. The King of the West. He will be the leader of the revived Roman Empire as we saw in Daniel 2 and as we just read uh, the verses there in Daniel chapter 7. He will be, a lead, he will be the leader of the revived Roman Empire, uh, thus the west of the other power blocks. Now, uh, Israel, according to Ezekiel 5.5, 5, is in the midst of the nations, if you want to write that down. Ezekiel 5.5. 5. When God looks down upon this earth, and he always does, he's, he's our ever-present God, uh, he's beholding what's going on, um, he knows what's going on, he knows what will be going on tomorrow, he is omniscient, as well as being omnipresent and omnipotent. Now, um, by the way, where is America? I'm not going to mention it in this outline. America will not be the America we know it as today. And already, I don't know how you feel. I've been in politics and debates and whatever through the years. And I want you to know, and I think you already, I think most of you know, you realize, uh, I'm not telling you anything you really don't know. We're in the last days of America. Unless God intervenes. We do not have that much longer to go as a strong nation that we once were. Now, there are those who say who will disagree, uh, but I'm, I'm willing to debate it. If anybody disagrees, uh, I'll say I've been there and done that. Um, I tell you, those who watch the debate, You saw the weakening of America. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, I'm not going to go any further with that. Uh, all right, now let's go uh, again. The king of the West will be the revived Roman Empire, the Antichrist leading this. The second one will be the king of the North. Now, I'm giving you this, uh, and then we'll go back over these. Okay? Some of them, well, what do you well, when we get down towards the last one, I'll talk a little bit more about them. But anyway, uh, the King of the North, the Russian Islam Alliance, and and that is definitely forming today, and has been forming, has been the Russian Islam Alliance. <clears throat> Uh, I'll give you a verse of scripture. Uh, we'll be going there eventually. Ezekiel chapter 38, well, chapter 39, but we'll deal mostly with 38. Ezekiel 38, if you want to write it down. Oh, my. I'll give you the next one. Am I going too fast? <laughs> For those who are writing. <laughs> the third one, the king of the east. The king, or kings, plural, of the east. And this, you can write Revelation chapter 16 through 14. Revelation chapter 16, 12 through 14. Who's the leader of this group? China. Let me, let me stop a little bit. 
Now, I do this, I say, I say China because of the size and the influence. The influence, uh, well, let me put it this way, and I think, again, I'm, I know that most, most, if not all of you, know this. China, China is in our midst. And as, by the way, um, the open borders to the south of us, China is sponsoring that. Did you know that? They absolutely are. I've read it. Uh, I've seen it. Um, I take the Epic Times. How many take the Epic Times? If you don't, you should. The greatest newspaper in America. It's an international paper. That's where you're going to find the truth. If you're going to rely on, <laughs> and, I, and I take the Daily Oklahoma, uh, you know, you need to read the adversary. Mm -hmm. I, uh, but anyway, I recommend the Epic Times uh, if you want the truth of what's going on in the world today. All right, the kings, uh, I told you about the kings of the uh, China. China is definitely influencing the politics of America. Oh, yeah. Absolutely influencing the politics of America. China is influencing, and I'll give you a small list here, uh, culture, Hollywood, even Hollywood. How many know that China has a great influence in, in the production of, of the film industry? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Read the Epic Times. There's other sources you can read. It will tell you all about it. All right? Education. Oh. Education. I spent 20 years in public education. You say, well, you probably were just a janitor I was to start with. But in the last years, I was promoted uh, to the district level. Um, of custodians and buying pur purchasing supplies and and that's where I learned a lot about what's going on uh, that were was going on in the state of Oklahoma because I had to deal with salesmen uh, of course I found myself in Tulsa quite frequently picking up supplies for the district uh, I was including included in principals meetings I learned much about what's going on in Oklahoma. Not only Oklahoma, but national uh, education. national uh, education. The NEA, mm -hmm. the OEA. I know much about it. I was there for 20 years. But anyway, I could go on and tell you lots of things about it. If you want more information, I can give you some more information. But anyway, let's move on. Hollywood, education, the military, economics. China is in it. When I was watching the debate, I saw not only China, I saw the WEF, the World Economic Forum, or how are you familiar with the World Economic Forum? Socialistic. Right. Socialistic. If you don't think we have a, a government today that is socialist, you've been asleep somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, anyway, <laughs> better move on before I get in more trouble. <laughs> I think we got one more to go. Let's move that over so it doesn't right. keep on. Balling. The king of the south. The king of the south. Now, if you were here last Monday night, and most of you do, will remember what we did, uh, we talked about Israel and the Arab, uh, and they're still doing it today, uh, starting with 1948 when Israel became a nation again. The very next day, the very next day, the Arab nations invaded Israel. And we know what happened. Israel won that one. David took care of Goliath. 
And then there came, and I'll, maybe I may skip some, but I'm going by memory now. I don't have the notes before me. In 1956, the Arab nations tried it again. Right. 1967, well, Dawn remembers me referring to that one. She was a little girl. We were living in Kansas. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, well, 1967, Arab nations again. 1973, Arab nations again. Oh my. But every time, you remember what happened? Every time Israel won. Mm -hmm. Even though they were far outnumbered, yep. far outnumbered in troops and, um, and so forth. Now, um, again, David defeated Goliath. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, and it's going to happen again. But now there's going to be a change. The tribulation period is coming, and it has to do with Israel. Now, there are those who tell you, there are those out there who tell you, well, uh, the church is going to go through the tribulation. No, it is not. No. The church will be gone. The tribulation has, is the time of Jacob's trouble, according to Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 7, I think it is. Yeah. All right? It has to do with Israel. And again, surrounding nation, well, this time during the uh, tribulation, the world, the world under Antichrist will be going against Israel. What a horrible time it's going to be. But guess what's going to happen? Jesus is coming again. That's right. <laughs> I love to read about it in Revelation chapter 19, starting in verse 11. When it seems that all hope is lost and Israel is about to be wiped out, guess who's coming from heaven with the armies of heaven? Oh, I love to read about that. And if you get into the um, depth of it, you know, what a grand heavenly parade that's going to be. And we as saints of God will be in it. The angelics, uh, all of the unfallen angelic world uh, will be following. We, the saints of the ages, saints of the ages. And it will be a 24-hour period parade. The world will know. All the world will have a chance to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ riding on that white horse. And he's coming and oh, what follows that campaign of Armageddon, and then, and then will follow the millennium mm -hmm. for a thousand years. Well, well I, I hope I live long enough to get to that. I love this you know, talk about the millennium. What's going to happen? All right, so now let's come back. Uh, <laughs> the King of the South, I believe, is led by Egypt. Because if you look back through these wars that we just enumerated, 1948, 1956, 1973, uh, or 1967, 1973, uh, and on and on, and more uh, uprisings, uh, even amongst the Arabs themselves. Oh, what a time. But most of the time it was led by Egypt, was it not? Yes, it was. Egypt. Now then. A question. Are you ready? Why will Antichrist make a peace treaty with Israel? Why? Read about it. Ezekiel 38, other places. All right. Um, Antichrist will sign that peace treaty. With, no. That doesn't, now, some think that that's going to be peace. With, during, oh, everybody will have peace uh, during the first three, year, three and a half years of the tribulation period, but we're just talking about Israel. Antichrist signs a peace treaty. He's going to take care of Israel, going to watch over Israel, and guarantee Israel's borders for the first three and one and a half years. However, however, the rest of the world will be experiencing warfare. All right? 
So why will Antichrist Christ make that <clears throat> finite peace treaty with Israel? To gain the confidence of Israel. To gain the confidence of Israel. He's preparing them something. He knows what he's going to be doing. And if we know the Bible, and I'm going to give you some scripture, we know what he's after, and I'll give it to you. Are you ready? All right. <clears throat> so he's going to gain the, the confidence of Israel, having in mind to present himself as the God of the world. That's it. You say prove it. Second Thessalonians 2, we'll read that one. If you want to turn there and look at it. I didn't mark my Bible, so well, I think I got there already. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I love, I love Thessalonians. There's something in it that I just, oh, I love it. Oh. Mm. Let's see, well, let's look at verse th verses 3 and 4. Are you ready? 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means. Well, we sh actually, we should have read verses 1 and 2, uh, so we'll better wet back up. I'll do what pastor does sometimes. <laughs> Let's get the whole story here. Verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye... Be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Oh, the falling away what is happening to not only the United States of America, but the world today. And we were, we're going to be talking about all this. We're going to look at all this. Um, anyway, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Go back to Isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> Isaiah. I love the book of Isaiah. Oh my, what a, what a tremendous uh, book of Isaiah. I love it. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14. And we'll be looking beginning in verse 12. Are you ready? Isaiah 14, beginning in verse 12. <clears throat> How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I, uh oh, watch what he's saying. Now listen to it. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But the word of God answers. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the peak. But, yeah, but now, but you see what he has in mind? When he signs his peace treaty with Israel, this is what he has in mind. Mm -hmm. He's going to eventually, he's going to finally come out and say, okay, I'm, I'm your God. Well, then, uh, that's it. Now, uh, so anyway, <clears throat> this confidence will cause Israel, and we're going to go to Ezekiel 38, if you want to be turning there. Now, this confidence will cause Israel to be lulled into a false security. Does that sound like something that's going on in America today? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. 
all is well. Oh no, it isn't. Oh, oh no, it isn't. <clears throat> well, let's get move on here. So anyway, a false security thinking Rome will guarantee her borders. Thus, Israel will concentrate on increased wealth, luxuries, entertainments, and not on defense. Look at, and I haven't turned there yet, Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel 38. And we'll be going back to Ezekiel 38, and we're going to be looking at uh, this Russian Islam alliance. Uh, but right now, I want you to look at verses 11 and 12. <clears throat> the Russian Islam alliance, as they come down, they're going to invade Israel or think they're going to invade Israel. In verse 11, and thou shalt say concerning Russians and, and Islam, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. No self-defense. They're, Israel, they're, they're reveling in wealth. They're reveling in luxuries. They're reveling uh, in all facts of life. Well, but they're not thinking about defense. Again, that sounds like America to me. Our defense is in trouble. It is. We're not, we don't have the defense we used to. Well, anyway. We gotta go. We gotta move on. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, oh, I think I gotta turn the page. The Northern Confederacies attack the Russia and Islam Confederacy will also be attack an attack on as Antichrist Western Confederacy. Well, anyway, Antichrist will prevail. But wait a minute, God in. Ezekiel 38, God intervenes, doesn't he? I'm going to put hooks in your jaw. Now, why is he going to do that? Why, why doesn't, does he not think that Antichrist can defeat the armies of Russia? Why is God going to intervene? Why? I'll tell you why. Scripture must be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. There's no chance... There's no chance that Russia might prevail against Antichrist. Right. God's going to do the work. Right. So you go back to what we just read in, in, a, in a Daniel chapter 7, and also Daniel chapter 2. When you look at that statue, Daniel chapter 2, you see four empires. What do we see? Mm -hmm. Babylon. Medo-Persia, Persia, and then Greece, and Rome. And then you come right down to the lower so, part of the statue, and you see revived Rome. That's right. People say, well, what about America? Great, the mighty America. Where are we? Do you see him in the statue? No. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw? No. We're not there. And if you have any, and I think I think all of you do. I'm not trying to make out that you don't, but I think you do. We got some intelligent people in here. I know that. I love talk to them. America is going down. Now, no matter what's going to happen in the election, we may get a stay. We may get a few more years, we may, but America is going down. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into any more of that right now. So, uh, so you look at that statue of Nebuchadnezzar, and you don't see, you don't see America. Oh, that takes care of that. Yeah. Now, America, it could be here, but it'll be... And we're approaching that more like a third world country. Mm -hmm. All right? Now then, I want to go back all over this again. Um, before we do that, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for later. I got all kinds of stuff in. 
Let's go to Zechariah. I've tried to teach Zechariah twice in my lifetime, but each time I was delayed or overtaken by something else. I started trying to teach, by the way, how hard I, I started, Brother Kimball wanted me to teach, and I did, and I was teaching in Zechariah before we had to move to Colorado. So I don't know if you remember that or not, but uh, anyway, uh, so I, so I got started. I think I got up to um, chapter three or four, I don't remember, and then we moved to, moved to Colorado on account of my wife's health. Um, and it worked. She was healed of her disease and given another 20 years, thank the Lord, of good life uh, out there until she got cancer. All right, let's go to Zechariah. I'm not there yet, but you're already there. Um, Zechariah chapter 5. This is, to me, I, I've, I've taught this several times, uh, in certain sections of it. Um, uh, let, let's, let's start in verse 5. Zechariah 5, verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what it is, what is this that goeth forth? And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. We're talking about a measuring unit, okay? I think you, you're, you may have that in your notes there, mm -hmm. all right, in your scriptures. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. Hmm. And the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? Now listen to this. And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Babylon. Babylon. We have to understand, yes, Antichrist will be head of the Western uh, Confederacy, and their capital will be in Rome. But let me tell you something, and, and, all, and again, all of you all know, I know you already know it. Rome is Babylon. Mm -hmm. Rome is Babylon. I was in Rome about 1953, I was in Rome. I spent some days in Rome. I went through the Vatican. I saw the Sistine Chapel. I want to tell you, as I toured the Vatican, I saw idolatry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw it myself. I don't think my eyes were deceiving me. In, uh, Rome, the Vatican, um, is not only a religious state, it's a civil state. Right. They fly their flag along with the other nations of, of Europe. That's right. I was there. I saw it. And I've read about it. I've got information written by former priests about it. I've got all kinds of information. But I saw it with my own eyes. Going through the Sistine Chapel, the, the painted by Michelangelo, you've read about it. It, it is something to see. It, it, it is quite a work of art. But you know what I saw out there? The you know what I saw out there? I saw mythology. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm 
uh, soul mythology. I was studied, I'm not decent, I've done some studying about mythology, but anyway, we can't go into that. That's, <laughs> you want to know more about it, we'll get to that later. All right, uh, anyway, we've got to move on. Uh, this EFO, oh, we're talking about commerce, the, the economy, and we're looking at uh, the end times. This woman, a woman in the bas basket, symbolizing wickedness. Uh, now, when you read Zechariah chapter 5, verses 5 through 11, compare it with, and this is what we're going to do. Uh, oh dear, I think I said it aside. We'll go, we can do it anyway. Um, compare Zechariah 5, verses 5 through 11, with Revelation 17 and 18. Okay? Here we go. The woman is cast into a basket. Uh, <laughs> the lid of lead is placed on top. What are we looking at? God is in control. Mm -hmm. Do you think God is allowing all of this to go on unnoticed? God is in control. You know, he knows about China. He knows about Russia. And he can restrain them. And he's going to restrain them. He will restrain them to a point until they're allowed to do uh, what they're going to do for, its, for only a season. The restraining of the woman is similar to what we read in, well, we need to go back to Zechariah or to the first, second Thessalonians, mm -hmm. chapter 2. Better look my watch. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again. And you were there, I should have told you to stay there, but I didn't do it myself. So. Hmm. All right. By the way, I love the, I told you while ago, I, I got, I'm here right now. I've got to tell you something. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Is that 1 Thessalonians? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then we'll go back to where I told you to go. And we are going to go to Second Thessalonians. Paul speaking to the Thessalonians, um, verse 19 and 20. Are you ready? I want you to look at this. I love it. It tells me something. I like to. I like to think about it. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the present? Are you are you seeing this? Maybe you've already seen them. Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? Right. For ye are our glory and joy. Bill, we're going to see Charlene again. I'm going to see my wife again. She's been gone for almost two years now. But you know what? The day is soon coming. What Paul is telling me here, I'm going to see him in the presence of Jesus Christ. Yes, we'll be looking for him. But we're going to look beyond him. And we're going to see all of our loved ones and friends. G. Campbell Morgan, great... English uh, scholar, he, he, when he said, uh, the, the friendships on earth will continue in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then he said this, the higher friendships on earth will continue in heaven. He's right, based on this and, the, and other scriptures. In John 14, I know I'm getting off here a little bit, but listen to this. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Jesus said it, and he's going away, and he's going to prepare a what for us? Mansion. A room. A mansion. Now, some people say, well, that's just a room. No. If Jesus is... <laughs> Jesus is not building us just a room. He's building a mansion. That's right. What he does, he does it right. Beyond our great expectations. Now, what is a mansion for, people? 
What have you experienced on earth? Put that together with what G. Campbell Morgan said. I like to think my wife, she's already there and she's already arranging things just like Jesus showed her to do. And that's, boy, what a wealth, well, hold on. Uh, I, I, there's other things I'd like to say, I gotta go on. <laughs> Let's go to Second Thessalonians. I know, I get, I get carried away sometimes. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Let's see, I think um, we're going to, um, yeah, we'll, we'll read, we, we read verses 3 and 4, look at verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth all restrains that he might be revealed in his time. There is a restraining power to Antichrist. That's right. All right. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth or restrains will yet will let or restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And you can go on and read the rest of it. And this is the same thing that's happening, uh, what we're looking at uh, concerning uh, Zechariah chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. That lead, that lead, the lead that God puts on those two women. Two women. Oh, by the way, who are the two women? Would you like to know? Are you ready? One of them is religious Judaism, and the other is the World Council of Churches. Yeah, the World Council of Churches. That's why I would have nothing to do with the National Council of Churches. And I pastored, I took a pastor in Kansas, and sure enough, I got an invite. My hearing aid is going to go out pretty soon. I hope I get through in time. <laughs> I just heard it. Um, anyway, I was in Kansas, and, and I was approached by a member of the local you know what, council. Um, you know, let's go get together for a Thanksgiving meeting. I said, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know why? I cannot join the National Council of Churches. Mm -hmm. I cannot have anything to do with the World Council of Churches. You know why? And by the way, if you want, I can get into that and prove it. I can prove it. I've got all kinds of information. Oh my, we're looking at Satan's organizations. Mm -hmm. This is the two women, wickedness. Again, compare that with Revelation chapter 17. Maybe we ought to do that. Let's go to Revelation 17. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation, and keep in mind what we've read. I think we read all that, didn't we? In Zechariah, well, didn't we read it all? <laughs> Sometimes I forget one. I know you have to understand. I'm getting old too. <laughs> all right. Yep. Yeah, we could read Revelation 14, but I'll skip that one for right now. Revelation chapter 17. Let's read about it. The two women. The two women, Judaism, World Council of Churches, and by the way, Rome is involved in that too. Mm -hmm. Rome is involved. Verse 1, Revelation 17, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, 
and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You know what we're looking at here? Do you have any idea? Oh my. Rome. Again, I was there. I saw it. And it's also when the World Council of Churches had their meeting in Australia back some years ago, guess who was taking part in it? Rome. Mm -hmm. Rome. I've got all that. 73 years the Lord has allowed me to be involved in all of this. I've got all kinds of information. Oh my. Well, let's read on. Um, oh my. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit. By the way, we are going to get into the spirit world just before we go to um, Revelation chapter 6. That's a few weeks away, yeah. Jack's, Jack wants to get there now. <laughs> All, right. All right, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was, and there it is, upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Oh, if, if that's another great study in itself, Babylonianism. Mm -hmm. It's with us today. Oh, yeah. It's in Rome. But it's not just in Rome. It's in the World Council of Churches. It's, oh my. You know, we can just go on and on and on. And I'll have to move on. <laughs> you know, Antichrist, I'll say this, we'll talk just a little bit about it. Antichrist starts out in Rome. Revived Roman Empire according to the, the statue uh, of Nebuchadnezzar, okay? You all seen pictures of that statue, I'm sure you have. Uh, you look at it again. Um, but, did you know? Do you know? And I think all of, some of you do, at least I know you do. But Antichrist will move his headquarters from Rome to Babylon. To Babylon, and that's another story. Oh my! Yeah. Babylonianism is alive and well today, and it's gaining strength. And when Antichrist makes his scene uh, as head of the Rome revived Roman Empire, eventually the time will come uh, when he will move his headquarters uh, to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And there, there will be, and scholars have, uh, I'm not the one who talk, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I read and what I know. I had a professor in you know, Baptist Bible College who talked about this, uh, Noel Smith. Jack, I wish you could have sat under him. One of the most brilliant men uh, of our times. He, passed away, bless his heart. Uh, you know, he didn't put up with any nonsense, <laughs> but he was good. Um, he, he come into the classroom and says, in the winter time, he says, open up those windows. I don't want to smell all this hot breath and whatever's in here. <laughs> That's the kind of man that he was. But I want you to know, he was an intelligent man and he debated higher officials and he, he would beat them oh my well anyway Rome and we're, we'll be talking some more about that um, so the restraining of the woman similar to the restraint of what we read about we talked about that um, oh my oh my 
transporting of the basket that Zechariah talked about there in Zechariah chapter 5. And we told you who the two women were. Um, now, oh, uh, we talked about the UN, the United Nations, the World Council of Churches. Um, uh, you know, when, when back in the days when they announced the forming of the United Nations, 1945, I think it was, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm against yeah. it. Where are they going to place it? In New York. Right. And I campaigned with, with many others, and some, maybe some of you did too, get the UN out of the U.S. and the U.S. out of the UN. Right. Yeah. And I still say it. Yeah. There are nothing, they would have nothing but spy and integrated our country with its socialism. Yep. And they're still at it. Uh -huh. Oh, that's another, that's something else we go for. So, where is it taken to Shinar? And where is Shinar? The revived Babylon in Iraq in the days of Antichrist. I'm getting just about ready to quit here. I want to see if there's anything. Oh, we got lots of more information. We're not going to get there. Um, oh, my. <laughs> Socialism, Marxism, synthesis, not antithesis. Uh, everything is relative. You know, it's sad. It's very sad. In the state of Oklahoma, we're, we're red. I come from Colorado where it's blue, and it's rife with socialism. Oh, yeah. Colorado is, uh, it's, it's getting worse. Uh -huh. I love Colorado. I've spent, actually, I spent almost 35 years in Colorado. The weather was good to me out there. I'd love to be able to experience that again, but not the politics. Right. They're socialists, and they're allowing the open borders to supply them with all kinds of people who are coming in and demanding to be taken care of by the state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. Socialism, this is what is happening. Uh, communism, it's communism. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could go on and on and on about that. Um, the world is engulfed in all of in all of this, and and this is where we're headed. I'm going to have to, I'm going to shut it down. My mouth getting dry. We've got more to go. Uh, we got we got to come back with preview of things to come, and to account. We're not through accounting for the Jew, but we're going to account for Satan and the de demonic world. This is another thing. When we get into the spirit world, and I have, I've had even Christians to say, oh, I don't believe in demons. Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I have. I don't believe in demons. Then you don't believe the Bible. Yeah. If you don't believe in demons, you don't believe the Bible. We'll talk, we're going to talk about the spirit world because when we're going through Revelation, uh, we're dealing with the spirit world. Oh, we are dealing with, oh my. Um, thank God we're on the winning side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, I'm ready. I'm ready just like the Apostle Paul to see those Thessalonians and we'll see our loved ones in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I don't know about Bill, but I'm ready. I think he is too. And uh, Jack, you better get ready. Kay's up. She's waiting for you. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. We got lots to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get all this together. We're going to quit. I'm going to stop. We'll have a word of prayer. Uh, Jack, you want to lead us in a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, your Father, 
in our presence right now, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for your, your blessings. Thank you for this lesson we've heard tonight. Pray that you might just uh, use it, each and every one that have heard, and Lord, that we can continue to uh, show what we know and tell what we, we've heard here and spread the word. Lord, pray that you might just continue to bless. We thank you for what you've given. Thank you for Brother Bill's and his knowledge. Pray that you might just continue to bless him and his family. Lord, pray that you might just continue to watch over us as we dismiss. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.